everybody and oh, welcome to this video where um, if, if you guys are paying attention I don't know how these videos are going up but I'm kind of on a roll recording videos so I'm just going to record as many as I possibly can and I don't know when they're going up but welcome to this video where I am about to spew out my hot takes and bad takes of Virginia Wolf's Orlando sorry I forgot the name of the book for a minute <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, you hear the name over and over and over and over and over again. And you're like, the book was called Othello. Nope. The book was called Oriander. Nope. The book was called... I didn't know what to expect because this is my first experience with good old V. Wolf. Okay. I don't really know what to say about this book without giving everything away. So here's the thing. If you were like me 48 hours ago and had not read Orlando, why don't, if you want, go read Orlando. Don't look up another fucking thing about Orlando. Just go read Orlando. Sight and scene. Okay. And then come back and we'll talk. So Orlando, I, I'm going to have to start this like this. One of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Okay, who is miles, miles smarter than me, swears up and down by this book. Okay, I'm probably overselling the swears up and down on this book. She really loves this book and highly recommended it to me. Like a good little simp, I fucking, I'm like, I'm, I'm definitely going to read this book right now. Okay, after this video, I don't know if she'll ever talk to me again. <laughs> No, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I almost think that Virginia Woolf was too clever for her own good, okay? And since this was the first Virginia Woolf book I read, I didn't know if I was reading someone who was not a very good writer or if she was dropping hints, okay? And then after you read the book, you realize, oh, she was just dropping hints and thought she was being clever. But to someone who had never read her before, I'm reading her going, oh, wow. Like, okay, so for instance, spoilers abound now. Okay, guys. So, like, she would be, like, describing something. And first off, again, I'm not a fan of third-person narration. Like, I find it tiresome. I, I just, I'm not a huge fan of it. But she would say, you know, Orlando thought this, or maybe he thought the exact opposite. Someone, th or blah, 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 um, did this, or maybe it was this completely different other thing. And I understand now that she was, like, priming the pump for a total dichotomy change, okay? Do I think that was necessary? Of course not, because if you are telling a good story, your good story will be understood and will transcend, okay? But because she was being clever, she was doing these things. Then there's some other things where she keeps, and I mean, I know that people are like, oh, this is what theme is. Theme is important in literature. I get it. But when you keep bringing up the same fucking thing over and over again and either using it as a descriptor or using it as a metaphor or using it as an adjective, but you're using it over and over and over again to illustrate something, to me, I thought it was lazy. And I'm like, oh, like, is that really the only thing you can think of? Oh, wait, no, this is important. And... Virginia Woolf is using it repeatedly so you remember it. So when we come back to it, you'll go, oh, yes, I see what you did there. Now, here, here's the thing. Like, this is considered brilliant because of these things. I considered it kind of tiresome and lazy. So, again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Art is subjective. So you can get some, you can't get some. Again, it's really hard for me to read books about very lovely, well-to-do people in very lovely, well-to-do situations because, like, 
I could just fucking care less, you know? And maybe that's like a class thing on my end where I'm prejudiced against people of higher social standings that I just do not give. Like, like it's like zero fuck awards, okay? Like, for anything like that. It's just really hard for me to care, for me to want to be, like, a part of, for me to feel sympathy for, for me to just, I just can't, okay? That's why I, like, with, with the exception of, like, Frankenstein, like, I stay away from all of that, like, just, like, Victorian, Edwardian, I don't know, whatever royal motherfucker was around when somebody wrote a book. Don't give a shit. So there's that. Another thing about this, there are quite a few, like, foreshadowing elements in the book that I don't know if people would necessarily go, oh, I know exactly what's going to happen here because he's holding a sword right now. So obviously, like, you know, like, sword. Am I right? There are a lot of descriptions in this book. Something is being described but you can also go, oh my god, is this a euphemism? Like, is this like, what What the... And then you're like, oh, okay, all right. So it is what it is. So basically, what happens is, for no real fucking reason, and I know some of you are going to go in the comments, well, this is the reason this is, blah, blah, blah. and then the funny thing is someone else in the comments is going to totally contradict what you fucking just chewed me out for. Who, who fucking cares? I'm just going to tell you how I felt about it. Orlando lives like 300 some fucking years and is basically 30 or 35 or whatever the whole fucking book not really but kind of i, I think if anything <laughs> as much as i think people will read this and go oh this is a book about feminism or read this and go oh this is a book about homosexuality um i think <laughs> i think if anything this is a book um, about the importance of revision, which is why I'm going to not like it right off the bat. Because when the book starts off, for the most part, Orlando is writing this poem called The Oak Tree, okay? And the poem is shit, okay? But as he's writing this poem over these centuries, it's finally so good that it's going to get published. And, like, that's basically the end of the book. Now... Is there a, a much bigger thing that happens in this book that makes everybody talk about it? Yes, but we're going to focus on this shit right now. So I feel like, because there was a part of me that's like, maybe she's trying to talk more about the maturity of the writer. But for the most part, Orlando makes a lot of the same fucking dumbass choices. And just everything's like, eh. So it's like, I don't know if maturity is necessarily the thing because it's like that whole thing like, oh, well, you know, as a writer, you're not going to make it really until you're much older and then you'll hit your stride and all this other shit. And then just like the fucking analogy of the fucking oak tree, whatever. It, it, it's like, okay, I understand it's fiction, whatever, but say what the fuck you mean. Like, why do you have to shroud every fucking thing in, like, constant metaphor? And, like, honestly, if you were to just take the things that happen in this story and you were just, like, making, like, a beat sheet, like, something you would use to, like, let somebody know, like, what the parts of the story are and, like, what are the things that happen. If you looked at it like that, this would seriously sound like one of the stupidest like not an actual story stories that's ever been written okay but because of the prose and how virginia wolf writes it it is worth a damn so this goes back to that whole saying that there are no bad ideas because honestly if this idea could become a classic. All you have to have is talent. <laughs> you could have any fucking horrid idea in the fucking world, and you can make an amazing book out of it if you're a fucking talented writer. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Elephant in the room is Orlando wakes up one day and is now a woman. 
Orlando's like, huh, that's different. And then just goes about life. And there are things like, yes, like um, Orlando notices differences on how people view him and treat him or her at this point. So the social commentary is definitely there. I honestly don't know if this was more of a... Because I, I, I think the feminist bend on this would be... So when Orlando was acting like this as a man, nobody had a fucking problem with it. But now that Orlando's acting like this as a woman, um, it's suddenly a fucking hard-ass thing. Like, what the fuck? Like, and all that shit. I, I can see how that would be like a big like deal if you know about virginia wolf's life which i know way more about virginia wolf than i ever did about her work you know about her relationships with her friends shit like that and so is this more of like a trying to talk about their relationship without coming out and talking about their relationship there's that whole thing um, I think the, I don't know if this is a thing right now or not, but I could kind of see like the, the trans community, like taking this book and going like, oh shit, look at this. Like a hundred years ago, this book came out and it's kind of talking about a lot of the stuff that like we're dealing with now and having that be kind of like a big thing. But again, I don't know if any of these things are happening. I'm just like taking stabs here. I don't know. Like, I, the one thing I will say about it on the positive side is that the fact that I am so, I don't want to say perturbed, but that I'm thinking this much about it means that the book obviously had some sort of effect on me. And that's all you could ever ask out of art. And I feel like as time goes on, because this has happened to me before, where I read a book and initially, and initially I was like, that book sucked. I really did not like that book. But I kept thinking about the book. I kept thinking about the book. I kept thinking about the book. And then I end up going back and rereading the book. And then I'm like, oh my God, this is an amazing book. So I could definitely see that happening here because I can't stop thinking about the book. And it's just like rolling around in my head. The idea that I'm sitting here going like, did this mean this? Did that mean this? That's a good feeling someone should have after reading a book. But the thing is, is that A, I don't think it matters what things mean in this book. There is some lazy shit in this book. Like, okay, let me say it like this. I don't know if lazy is the right word. There are some things that are unexplained that there's a part of me that feels like the reason why it's unexplained is because there's not really a good reason for it. You're like, oh, that's clever. Yeah, okay, that's fine. You know, whatever. There are a lot of things in this book that people with short attention spans are probably going to just roll their eyes at. Because, again, I feel like if Virginia Woolf were to say straight up some of the things that she wanted to say in this book this book would not have been published, at least in her lifetime. So there, one of the reasons why she plays around and toys around with shit might just be to get around censorship and, like, obscenity laws and shit like that. Whatever, I don't know. I don't know, maybe I should, like, research this more and do, like, a more thought-out video. I'm just giving you my first impressions and shit like that. If you guys know, like I said earlier, like you guys are gonna leave fucking stuff in the comments and then someone's gonna contradict what someone else said, whatever. Um, that's just how things like this go. So if there's stuff that you would like to say about this book and um, you want to have a conversation about this, leave it in the comments down below and we can start there and see how that goes. I just, I just don't know. Like I, first impression, I didn't like it, but I'm still thinking about it. And this is one of those books where I don't think I'm not going to remember it. Like there are times where I read a book and like, I'm like, oh, that was really entertaining. That was fun. And then like the next day, I don't even remember what the fucking book was about. Okay. This book was not fun. I did not enjoy it when I was reading this book. I did not enjoy myself when I was reading this book. I was just like, fucking come on. It's in my head. It's in my head. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. 
So let me know what you think. Keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Creo, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.